Good morning, everybody. Today is Unit 2 for Standard 6, and that is Breaking Barriers. Never do things others can do and will do. If there are things others cannot do or will not do. This, these words were said by Amelia Earhart. She was the first woman pilot who travelled alone across the Atlantic Ocean. She even travelled alone from Hawaii Islands to the US. She loved flying and each time she flew, she wrote her experiences in books. So she wrote a lot of books and all her books contain her experiences in flying. She was so enthusiastic about flying or loved flying that she even started a school for aviation and this school specially trained women pilots. Now today's lesson is about Avni Chaturvedi, the first Indian woman to fly a fighter aircraft all by herself. The reason this unit is called as breaking barriers is it is something that Avni Chaturvedi did. She went beyond a barrier which nobody had done, a profession that nobody ever thought of selecting, a profession that nobody ever thought a woman could do. That is the reason Emily Yohert says, never do things others can do and will do. So she means to say, don't do something which everybody does. Go one step ahead and break a barrier and do something which somebody has not done and you are the first person to do it. February 19, 2018. The sky was clear and the weather was perfect. A supersonic fighter jet, a MiG-21 Bison, took off from Jamnagar Air Force Station in Gujarat. The flight lasted about 30 minutes and then the jet circled back to land safely. It was February 19, 2018. On that day at Jamnagar, a place in Gujarat where you have the Air Force Station, one supersonic fighter jet called MiG-21 Bison took off. That means it flew and it went on rounds for around 30 minutes and then circled and then came back and landed safely at the airport. That is it, Jamnagar. The sortie was like any other that is carried out every day as part of routine training. Except for one thing. This was the first solo flight by flying officer Avni Chaturvedi. At 24 years, she became the first Indian woman to fly a solo sortie on a fighter aircraft. Now, when you talk about a sortie, a sortie is a military aircraft, aircraft that is flown. So, every time you have the forces, the military forces, let it be the army, the navy or the air force, you will find that they have their training every day. So, on this very particular day, you could find that training was going on. So, when you saw this MiG-21 bison going on, uh, on, uh, on rounds for 30 minutes, everybody felt that it was just a regular routine training. But then, something was different. What was different? The different thing that happened that day was that it was flown or it was taken off by this woman pilot who turned out to be a fighter fighter aircraft pilot who was a woman. She took the plane alone by herself and flew in Jamnagar. So it was something extraordinary because it was the first time a woman took a fighter aircraft and flew and that time her age was only 24 year, years. Avani Chaturvedi, Bhavna Kant and Mohana Singh were India's first batch of women fighter pilots and were commissioned into the Air Force, Indian Air Force in 2016. Just a year before this, the Indian government had decided to admit women pilots in the fighter stream. It was to be on a trial basis for five years. It was for the first time that women pilots were appointed in the armed forces and the women that were selected 
for the women that formed the first batch of fighter pilots were Avni Chaturvedi, Bhavna Kant and Mohana Singh. Remember their names. Avni Chaturvedi, Bhavna Kant and Mohana Singh. They were the first batch of women fighter pilots. They were appointed by the Indian Air Force uh, that year. Before that itself, the government had decided that let us appoint women as fighter pilots and let them be on a trial basis for five years. Let them, let's see if they can cope up. That is what the government uh, doubted that whether women will be able to be fighter pilots. And Avni Chaturvedi, Bhavna Khan and Mohana Singh, they were the first batch of uh, women fighter pilots. Women form a very small part of the nearly 1.4 million strong Indian Armed Forces and this is what makes Avani's achievement all the more remarkable. When you compare the men who join the Air Force, you will find that the women are very few and that is why nobody ever thinks, no woman ever thinks of joining the Air Force, especially to take a fighter to take a profession of a fighter pilot, it is very rare. That is why you, we can say that uh, Avni Chaturvedi's achievement is really remarkable. When I sit in the cockpit and close the cockpit cover, any feelings of achievement, empowerment and so on are left on the ground. I don't carry them with me. The aircraft is so fast and the time to react to any situation is so little that we don't have time to think about anything else, says Chaturvedi wisely. When she, uh, she was asked what was going through her mind as she pushed the jet to 700 kilometers per hour. When once uh, Avni Chaturvedi was interviewed and the interviewer asked her what she feels when she sits in the cockpit, that is in the pilot's seat, when she sits in that, what do you feel? The, the interviewer asked her. They asked, she asked, the interviewer asked her, does she feel a sense of pride that being a woman she had broken all, all barriers and uh, succeeded in coming to such an extent? Does she feel that she's uh, no lesser than the man? What, achieve, what does she feel when she sits in the cockpit? But Avanti, Avani said, when I sit in the cockpit, of the fighter aircraft, I have to leave all my thoughts, all what I have achieved, all my empowerment, everything is left on the ground and then I go and sit in the cockpit and then she says when I start uh, taking my flight and taking, it, taking off on my flight, all I have to think about is how I am going to manage the flight, what are the decisions I am going to make. And whatever decision she is going to make has to be very quick because the flight is going up to 700 kilometers per hour, which is very, very fast. And that's why it is called as a supersonic jet flight. Supersonic is something which is faster than sound. So she says, nothing comes to my mind. I only have to think about sitting on my cockpit, sitting in my seat and driving the aircraft and moving with it and making changes whatever required. On Avani's second sortie of the day, during the training, there was a warning as she was preparing to take off. Immediately, she decided to abort the takeoff. That day, I realized how the decision made in a split second can get the situation under control or push it out of control. Had I delayed my decision to cancel takeoff or taken off with the cockpit cover open, the consequences could have been disastrous, she says. When Avani sat on her jet fighter and was about to go for the second round of training, at that time there was a warning that was declared. And uh, immediately what she did was, instead of taking off, she decided that I will not take off, I will cancel my takeoff now. Why, why was this warning given was because they said that cockpit cover was opened. Now she made that decision so quickly. If she had decided let, let me take off and probably if the flight 
the jet fighter had gone to a great height with the cockpit cover open, something very bad would have happened because at the speed at which it flies, nothing, nothing good could have happened to her. So she says, immediately the decision that I made, I realized that how important it is to make a split second decision that means within a second she should have she made the correct decision the indian air force has a three stage process for training pilots in stage 1 pilots have to practice flying in a basic aircraft for 55 hours while in stage 2 they have to practice flying for 87 hours in an advanced jet trainer after this training the trainees are separated into different streams according to what they will be flying. Helicopter, transport planes or fighter jets. If you decide to join the Indian Air Force and want to be training as trained as pilots, there is a process through which you have to go through. There are It is three stages. In the first stage, the pilots have to practice flying an ordinary aircraft for 55 hours. Once that training is over, the first stage is over. Then you will go in for the second stage. In the second stage, you will be flying another jet, which is a little more advanced compared to the previous one, but you will be driving, you will be flying with it for 87 hours. Once the second stage is over, for the third stage, the trainees are taken and they are separated into three branches or three streams. What are the three streams? Either you will be flying a helicopter, a transport plane or a fighter jet. So you, you know what's a helicopter and when you come a helicopter you have seen but when it comes to a transport planes, transport planes are planes that just take you and leave you to a particular area or take things and leave armaments and leave them to a particular area. But a fighter jet is something which is the most difficult among the three. Those fit to be fighter pilots then continue to the third stage of training in which they have to practice flying for 145 hours in advanced jet trainers. Then these officers are further trained to fly fighter jets that can go faster than the speed of sound. The type of aircraft the pilots train on depends on the squadron to which they belong. Once you are selected to be a pilot in the fighter jets, then the third stage of training begins. So, when you begin the practice, you will be flying for 145 hours in a very advanced jet, which flies at a very great speed. After that, these officers again are trained, and they are trained to fly fighter jets, which will go very faster than that of a sound. Then the Faster, their speed is faster than that of sound, they said. Based on that, you will be selected to which squadron you belong. Now, there are types of flights, fighter jets. It can be the Rafale jet, it can be a combat jet. Based on that, what fighter fl flying you do, what kind of training you have taken, in what kind of a fighter jet you have been trained, based on that, you join the team. team. The team is called as a squadron. Avni said that the progress from the advanced jet trainers to MiG-21 is gradual and there is a structured syllabus to become an operational pilot. So started her, she started her advanced training in July 2016 and completed, completed it in 2017. Then she got posted to number 23 squadron which flies the MiG-21 Bison. So here Avni says that flying a MiG-21 Bison is the most difficult. She says if you want to be a pilot for flying the MiG-21 Bison, it is very slow. The process is so slow. It has a syllabus which is properly decided and given a thorough thought. You have to go one by one, stage by stage. Only then you can become a full-fledged pilot who can drive, who can, who can take the flight alone by themselves. So she started her training 
in July 2016 and she finished it in the month of October 2017. After she was totally trained, then they gave her and told her that you will be appointed to, to number 23 squadron and that squadron will be flying the MiG-21 Bison. It took almost four months to go solo, she says. The time taken to fly a solo sortie varies from person to person and also depends on a lot of other factors. She added that her course mates, the other two women pilots, were being trained and would perform solo sorties soon. My next goal is to become a full-fledged operational pilot. So she says it actually took four months for her to sit alone in the MiG-21 Bison flight and take off by herself. And she says for every person it takes different time. How clever or how intelligent you are, it depends on that. There are different factors, they said, different reasons why one person takes little time and whereas others take a long time. When she talks later on, she says her other two friends, batchmates, that is Bhavna and uh, uh, Bhavna and Mohana Singh, they are still in their training and she says very soon they will also be performing solo sorties. That means they will also be going on a routine training where they will be flying the MiG-21 bison alone but among the three of them she was the first to go solo on a solo sortie or a solo routine sortie and then she says my main aim is that I should be able to fly this uh, uh, MiG-21 bison alone and become a totally trained pilot. This is all you have in the lesson. I hope her, uh, uh, her evidence or her story, this story I hope which was told by uh, Avni Chatravedi will also influence, influence you influence you, and you will also be going out to do something beyond your uh, capacity. In grammar, you have sentences and I will teach you about the kinds of sentences. There are four kinds of sentences. One is declarative sentence, imperative sentence, interrogative sentence and exclamatory sentence. Now, declarative sentence is just an ordinary statement. For example, I am going out. I cannot read English. So, these are just statements. So, it is called a declarative sentence with a full stop at the end when it comes to imperative sentence it is a commanding sentence now for example I say get out of the class behave yourself please give me your book all these it can be a command it can be a request it is called a imperative sentence when it comes to an interrogative sentence an interrogative sentence will always have a question mark if I say for example, what is your name? Where are you going? All these will have a question mark. So those sentences which have a question mark is called an interrogative sentence. When it comes to exclamatory sentence, exclamatory sentence will have an exclamatory mark. An exclamatory mark is a line and a dot at the end. Now whenever you want to show that you are happy or you're surprised or you're filled with joy, for example, hooray, we won the match. Wow, what a beautiful girl. So all these sentences will have an exclamatory mark. It is called an exclamatory sentences. Now I will read out these sentences in the next part. We are going to Pune tomorrow. You have to make it an interrogative sentence. That means it has to have a question mark. So you will say, are we going to Pune tomorrow? The next question. Kiran went to the amusement park with her friends. Make an interrogative sentence with this. Did Kiran go to the amusement park with her friends? Put a question mark at the end. She has a lovely voice. Make it into an exclamatory sentence. Such a lovely voice becomes an exclamatory sentence. Fourth one. What a wonderful sunset it was. 
make it a declarative sentence you will say it was a wonderful sunset just a statement the match was exciting exclamatory what an exciting match did you wash the potatoes before peeling them make it an imperative sentence that means you should give a command please wash the potatoes before peeling them now we have finished with the types of sentences now let's begin with grammar part of adjectives adjective when you say it is a describing sentence it's a it's a word that describes something now like for example you say she is beautiful she sings well so these things are called adjectives he is very fat he is very thin all these are the word thin is an adjective which describes a person so those are called as adjectives now you have to go to the b part write the adjectives in the brackets in the correct order we have a dress red long silk so you have to make it like a long red silk dress next one a card handmade paper beautiful a beautiful handmade paper card i have given you the answers try it by yourself and then see the answers and write it it will be like a practice for you next c part in your notebook rewrite these sentences by using the adjectives in the brackets in the correct order she bought she bought a watch for the event waterproof colorful new so you have to use these describing words about the watch you will say she bought a colorful new waterproof watch now the next ones are already done for you but you need to try doing it do the match these phrase phrasal verbs to their meanings so you have words on one side and what is the real meaning meaning of those words if i say put off what is the real meaning of put off put off is to cancel so i've given the match of the following for that also i've given the remaining things copy it and do it